mašīnām, ar kurām ir brauc, to ziem. Un kur man tā vairāk? Tu paņēsi tas uvāk? Nu, jā, brauc. Thank you. Nevaru pateikt, ka mēs to esam spārbējot stīgā.
final race we can do the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Cup Friday afternoon and we are ready for the start of the last race of the two-man season on this fast demanding and bitterly cold Lake Placid track welcome back everybody to our coverage of this final race weekend the last hurrah here before we return next year for the world championships and what a playground this is invoking the spirit of the old mile and a half intimidating Lake Placid track built for the 2000s this track replaces that that was used in 1932 and 1980 winter games a short start got to build speed very quickly get in because the first corner is quite a challenge already not just a little dink it's a proper turn and then three left-handers corner two Corner three, try and avoid skids and taps on the left-hand wall down into turn four. And then the beginning of the Devil's Highway. Two right-handers, five and six, into the left at corner seven. Then eight and nine, this little upper labyrinth, down into Shady Two, corner 10, named after the legendary track on the uh, corner on the old track. Corner 11 sets you up for the 12-13 crossover, which is fast and fierce into 14 named after Stan Benham uphill through the chicane and dropping down into the heart the final three corners 17 right-handed 18 little dink on and off and then corner 19 big two pressure turn and up through corner 20 to the finish line which is just there a long way up well our field has 19 sleds in it and among them is our World Cup points leader, Francesco Friedrich, the newly crowned two-man world champion, Johannes Lochner, racing here again. And great to see that Mickey Vogt, third in the World Cup standings, is here as well. Well, when they were forced to miss out on the race in Altenburg after crashes in training, uh, Francesco Friedrich took the opportunity to uh, race ahead of them at the top of the World Cup standings. And there is France. The GOAT, the greatest of all time, no question at all about that. An astonishing career record. Now, air temperature hovering around zero. It was minus 11 this morning. Ice temperature minus eight. It was minus nine and a half this morning. And we saw a welter of track records early on today. I think we may see some here as well this afternoon. I know that Friedrich and his crew will be ch uh, chasing them. There's Georg Fleischer warming up, but he is not down to race with Johannes Lochner. That should be Joshua Tascher. Well, here is the start list. Boris Van goes off first. And then as we get past the first three outside the top 10 in World Cup Raddings, Adam Amour and Francesco Friedrich will have good early ice. Mickey Vogt is back. And then long way down the order, 13th start draw for Hansi Lochner. Then Kim Jin Su, the sensation of Altenburg. Final two man boxer race of the season here in Lake Placid. Martin Haven watching the action with you as Boris Van and Antoine Roux get ready to get the race underway for Monaco. Fifth two man World Cup for the driver, Boris Van, as a driver, turned 31 last week. Made his driving debut in, in La Plan on French ice. 12th two-man race for his 26-year-old Brookman, Brekman Antoine. Antoine's first ever bobsleigh race was here in the North America's Cup in November 2019. Now these guys with a great eighth-place finish in Innsbruck. Just after Christmas, let's see what they can produce here. 514 start record is a 496. Big Boris Van and Antoine Rieu are good starters. But Boris has not raced on this track before from the front seat. He'd come here previously with Rudy Rinaldi when he was the brakeman for Monaco. Oh, he's in trouble and he's gone already. Well, he's going the Monaco race. A couple of dramas at the bottom of the Devil's Highway. Antoine Rieu cannot hold himself in the sled. And it's come back up. Now that does happen occasionally. Boris, as he comes through the chicane, just checks behind him. 
Antoine is not there, and unfortunately that was the end of the season for Boisva and Antoine Rieu. Because if you don't complete the run with everybody you started with, then you are disqualified. No brakes, but he's going slowly enough that they're going to have to run down and catch the sled. Boris is going to try and get out and stop it. He does so uh, as Bruno Michon, the legendary French driver who's been coaching the Monegasques for so long, and the French crews. Well, we saw in the monobob a few sleds came very close to going over there. Giorgetta Popescu dicing with danger a couple of times. But Big Boris just could not quite get on and off. This is 789, the lower part of the Devil's Highway. A big height here, out of eight. Late, 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 and just nowhere for the sled to go other than over. And rolls off nine, or rolls off eight into nine, and then through Shady upside down, and poor Antoine Rieu just can't hang on. There's no seat belts, there's no big handles to hold on to. You're literally gripping with a finger or two of each hand in a, in a bent bolt, basically in the chassis. And you're trying to hold your own weight in against the force of gravity or two or three times the force of gravity. So, all right. Well, it looks like he is okay. The medical crew will check him out just to make sure that there's no worries. There'll be a, a track hold while they check the ice to make sure there's no gouges or big scrapes, big holes in it that will disrupt another sled. That's a great view of the basic interior or exterior of the sled. And the two uh, axles there. You can see there are scrapes in the track. Now, those are below where you would normally have the, the runner marks normally would go across the words Lake Placid. Boris is OK. Sled a little bit second-hand. This is the sled of Latvia's Jakobs Kalender. Look at the runners closest to the camera there, how highly polished they are. They've not got a square edge like an ice skate. They're not for turning like, like ice skates do or stopping like ice skates do. They're profiled, they're rounded, about the width of maybe your middle finger, narrower certainly than your thumb, and, uh, and rounded and polished to a, a really high shine. Well, there's Antoine. Yeah, he's OK. The medical crew just going through the procedures to make sure everybody is OK. Well, 29th two-man World Cup for Boris Vah, his fifth as a driver. And unfortunately, as with everybody else, always aware that when you're pushing to the limit, it is possible that things go wrong. There's Max Robert, along with Bruno Mijon, coaches the French and the Monegasques. So he's up at the start, and Bruno there as well. And a little view of Shady too. Shady, zigzag. The names, some of the names to country with on the old track. The old track was built into the ground predominantly with big brick walled banked curves for corners like Shady and, and Zigzag. But it was uh, a semi natural track, if you like. And uh, the remnants of it, most of it, is still alongside the modern track here. And if you do get the chance to go to the Adirondacks, Spring, summer, or autumn, or winter, if you get a chance to come out to Mount Van Hovenberg, it's a, a great place to come and take a look. I've got a lot of history here. Hall of Fame in the main building now, the big new building they built uh, two or three seasons ago. Beautiful facility. Not too far out of Lake Placid itself either. We passed the uh, ski jumps on the way out that were used in the 1980 games. And uh, based here at the bottom of the track as well is the uh, Biathlon Centre. Peter Fisher on the right-hand side, giving the thumbs up. We're almost there. Here comes Kalender. 
21 year old Latvian driver, and here is Brakeman, 27 year old Egis Nemer. Races and practice. There's the, the, the new start finish building, or the new center here, with uh, the long part of the roof covering the uh, indoor push track. And behind, you can see the biathlon arena. There's the range, penalty loop. Awful lot of money being spent in this area by the New York State sporting authorities and by order, the, the Olympic Region Development Association that uh, runs these facilities. For many, many years, this track was managed by Tony Carlino, former bobsled driver from a family of bobsledders, as so many are in Lake Placid. And now be managed this season by Brian Berghorn, who we last saw coaching a couple of years ago in World Cup. Brian's been around the sport a long time as well. We took over from ex-US slider John Napier, who was managing the track for a couple of years. Napier from another sliding family. He was a slider, his dad was a slider. His parents are still often seen around the track here. They live very close. But Napier's moved down to Florida, which makes a winter in Lake Placid uh, not really work for him. So Brian Berghorn managing the track now and hopefully with the help of Tony Carlino he'll be uh, getting this place in fine form for next year's World Championships. Can't wait to come back. Worlds were due to be held here in 2021 but uh, we all know what happened in 2020 that made it not happen. Okay, getting back underway. Here comes calendar, Edgis Nemer. 5.14 the start for Boris Van and Antoine Riou. Are they down in single digits? No, 5.23 getaway. We may not be seeing start records today. Former rower calendar crashed out of the Worlds. Was disqualified in the last World Cup race in Altenburg as well. The weight issue with the sled. So he needs to get a good run going here. He's past the initial danger point. 8 9 transition. Now down into the labyrinth. Oh, 12 13. Holy moly. Our best speed so far 129.8, miles an hour. Climbing uphill now from corner 19 all the way to the finish line, 55.85. It's going to be some jittery nerves in the next few sleds, and especially among the coaches and the track workers. That was close. That was close. Well, let's take a look at that again. This is the exit of 12, big looping height. Oh, run away with that, but... Mm -mm, don't want too many more of those. Right, Jakob's calendar and Egges Nimmer are down. Next up, Mattia Variola. 35th World Cup start for him. Nine on the brakes. Race here in 2017, but then he was a brakeman for Patrick Baumgartner. So it's the first time here as a driver with Fabio Batti behind him. Fabio's fifth two-man World Cup. Started in November 2022, beginning of last season. An occasional appearance on the back of a two-man sled, 5.29. Little flop off two. Tapper skid in three. The sled looks like a rental as well. Quite a number of sleds being rented. Oh, come on! Being rented by athletes here rather than spend the five grand to ship them across the Atlantic for a week or two. Italian flag on the front, the Jamaican colours on the front and the side as well. 
forward again. He's a little late all the way through the heart. Oh, this is not doing much to settle nerves, is it? Well, Matteo Barriola, first race on this track, as a driver at least, gets it down in 56.23. Best result for him, seventh place finish in Altenburg. That was last season. But here again, look at the height there, really high and late. And whips through there. That's a much, much later exit than you want. And again that here, feeling the ice very different, I think from the way it was in training. Now, in an FES sled, because the Germans don't rent, Adam Amour with Benedict Hertel behind him. European champion, Adam Amour. Only time here in the NAC at the end of last season. 5-12, that's a great start. Strange noise the sled is making. Now that might just be because he's an FBS. I don't recall them particularly making this noise. 2600's up. Best speed into Shady. Skid though into the labyrinth. Whoa, and again, 1213 being a problem. Best speed so far. I had to really wrestle it off to 17. And a 19, climbing uphill to the line, and across the line, 55-1-9. Well, in the monobot race, we had six new track records in the first seven sleds in heat one. And then Monobob is uh, more of a work in progress than two man. <laughs> yeah, you're all right. Falls over Stefan Bosch's feet, I think, there. Again, look here early on. Tap on the wall, skidding down from three to four. And then down in the Devil's Highway. He was a little bit late and in the labyrinth as well. Through the chicane. Kind of skates through there pretty decently. <laughs> yeah, another one to go with Benedict. Next up, 99th World Cup race, because we can't count the European Championship race in Segovia as the World Cup race, or it would be number 100. Francesco Friedrich with Alexander Schuller. Friedrich, the newly crowned world champion. Friedrich has not been off the podium this season, but has not won a two-man race. 5.08, epic getaway. They're chasing Justin Olsen and Evan Weinstock's 496 start record. I'm not sure the conditions are right for it. That record dates back seven seasons now. This is a little better, more control from Friedrich than we saw from Adam Amor. Of course, he's been here a dozen times. Three golds. Two silvers, one bronze on this track. Just a silver medalist last year. And he's going to come across the line with a handy advantage. Half a second clear, 54-69. Last four out things here. Two golds, two silvers. He's basically shared the medals out with Johannes Lochner. Down into the chicane, a little bump off Benham's bend, and then a couple of taps in the chicane. This is how it looks as he comes towards us. Standard tap, tap, tap. Still a good run. Still the smile on his face from Francesco Friedrich. Can see it, the glint in his eyes. And great to have Mickey Vogt back after that uh, horrifying crash in training in Altenburg. 
thoughts with Sandro Mikkel, his brakeman, who is back home in Switzerland now and recovering. Hopefully he's watching the action so here as well. Andy Haas in the back of the sled with Mickey Vogt. 72 man World Cup start for Andreas Haas. Raced here in 2022 behind Seaman Friedley. That was the last World Cup on this track. Mickey Vogt finished in third place with Sandro Mikkel behind him in that race. Now, if they can get in amongst the medals here again, that will be something very special. 5.20, good start. Mickey Vogt has not been out of the top six in a race since Samaritz in January 2022. He's had a really strong run of form going the last two seasons. Little late. Back under control as he comes off shady. Not too bad, 12 to 13. Let's see how he shoots the chicane. This is a good looking run, third best speed. At the moment, he's behind Friedrich and Amor. And there's still Johannes Lockner to come in a while. How close is he going to be to the leaders? Ooh, 12 hundreds behind Amor in third place. Well, empirically, not a bad run, but Francesco Friedrich found a lot in that first heat. Nine ten transition is such a hard one. And here through the chicane, not bad. They'd lost a bit of speed early on beforehand. Well, good to see Mickey Vogt back in a sled before the end of the season. And he lies in third after our first five sleds. Make that first six sleds. Boris Vang was first off. Did not complete the run, though. So at five have finished. That means Simon Friedley with Luca Rolli. Friedley only one race weekend here. That was the World Cup last season. Finished in seventh spot. Luca Rolli in his eighth two-man World Cup start. Friedley had Andy Haas behind him last year. Whoa! Rolly gets in hard, sled skids away. 5.13, but losing a little bit of that momentum. Good, strong start there, but he rattles it hard off the exit of three. Oh. Couple of late flops. 8.9. Producing problems still. On oh, again, high off 12. Past most of the code danger points now. Down into the high. 7,500 flat. Looks like a fourth best run from Seaman Friedley. 9,400 back, 55, 63. 3200s behind Mickey Vogt. And very nearly a second behind Francesco Friedrich. Well, Friedrich with so much experience on this track. Just one race weekend here previously for Seaman Friedley. And not the cleanest of loads from Luca Rolli. Brings it late off three, drives it into the wall on the run down to four. And here again, late off 12. It seemed all day yesterday and today in the mono that the track is faster than they're expecting. It's taken a while to develop. Now then, Frank Del Duca with Maneo Mitchell behind him. And worth mentioning that this is not just a World Cup race, this is also the Pan Am Championships. So 
athletes from and teams from North and South America and from the Caribbean can all compete. We've got two US and two Canadian sleds in this race. So Frank Del Duca, the first of those. Only one World Cup here, but six North America's Cup races under his belt. Six wins and a handful of other medals. So he's got plenty of experience. Grew up driving on this track. Twelfth World Cup driving and 8-9 nearly gets him. Finished in eighth place in last year's World Cup race, just before Christmas 2022. Oh. A little wild, Frankie. Very sideways through the chicane. Fourth best speed. Well, unbelievably, he was up to second on the splits before the chicane, and across the line is in third place. Well, Mark Vandenberg's new two-man sleds sure seem to have some speed. They shot a roebuck down at the bottom in the uh, red and blue jacket. Tuffy Latour there as well. Look at this, rocking and rolling. And then 8-9, very late. Ooh. Manny Mitchell will have known all about that in the back seat. And here as well, broadside in the chicane, gets the unfortunate tap. Ooh. Hey. One more. Hey, happy birthday, Kyle. All right. Next up, Lavius Emil Tsipolis with Mats Mignus behind him. Tsipolis, first time here. Nick, this has been around the block more than once. Two-time Olympian. 56 four-man World Cups. This is his 53rd two-man World Cup. He made his debut in North America in Whistler in January 2016. Eight bruising seasons ago. 5-12, he's still got the power. The last three sleds, Friedley 5.13, 5.13 for Del Duca, 5.12 for Tipolis. Top six speed, second fastest start, but he's drifting out to fourth place on the split. Not as clean and tidy as Frank Del Duca, but why would he be? He's never driven here before. Comes cleaner through the chicane. That is going to help. This could be fourth place at the line. Nicky Boat is in fourth at the moment. Where's Sipul is going to come? Fifth place, a tenth behind Vote. Well, that's not a bad drive at all for somebody in their first race on this track. Only three of our drivers were in the North America's Cup race a couple of weeks ago. Most of them too highly ranked to be allowed to go pot hunting at the junior level. Well, not a bad chicane. And Emma Tsipoulis in his 19th World Cup race in fifth place after the first nine sleds. So 10th on the start list, Marcus Trichel finished sixth here last year, one of his best World Cup results. The best of all, a fifth place finish in Altenburg, his last season. Raced here in the North America's Cup and three World Cup outings as well. So he's got knowledge of the track. And Marcus Sammer, Opper, his brakeman, his 49th two-man World Cup. He started over 100 World Cup races in his career and still going. And still, when you get big Marcus Sammer on the back, you get massive acceleration. In and down, 5-14, another big, big start.
pass this ball. It's Francesco Fritig at 5.08. 5.12 out of a more. And Camille Skoulis, a couple of 5.13s. And these guys, 5.14. They are right in there swinging. And manages to make less of a drama in 8.9. It's off. Shady. 12.13. No drama at all. Marcus Donegal with a good run going. Fifth best speed of the sixth past the start. This could be a top four run for the Austrian. He might be in the mix for the medals. Good first heat for Marcus Sammer. Where is he? He's in sixth place. 55.46. 500 behind Sakulis. 1500s out of four. 2500s from a medal. Well, six last year in Lake Placid, six at the moment. That was a skid out of 10. Got on to 11, okay. Out of Benham's Bend, down through the chicane. Didn't get too much interference from the chicane either. Smile from Marcus Sammer on the right and Marcus Dreichel on the left. Now Patrick Baumgartner with Robert Matsia. Raced here in November 2017 in the World Cup and March 2023, the postseason NAC race at the end of last year that quite a few drivers came to. Robert Matsia, 14th Full Man World Cup. Baumgartner back in 2017, his first World Cup appearance here, and current rival Mattia Barriola as his brakeman. 5.19 getaway, the seventh best start, but only the eighth best velocity. Now they're back up to seventh best speed. Okay, got 8.9 under control. Out of 10, six best speed. Ooh, a little rocky. Now, has he gone for slightly thinner runners for a bit of control? I think that's not a bad gamble on a really cold track like this. Fat runners give you top speed. But it doesn't help if you're skidding because you can't drive them. 55.58, not so bad, says Simone Batazzo. Obviously, he does, and he says something Italian, but that was the expression. You, you get me? Well, Patrick looked happy with that. 25th place in his only World Cup outing here. Seven seasons ago, late height in 12. But actually got it on to 13 pretty cleanly. Not bad in the chicane. Got that little early brush, and then... Just a tiny little double tap there on the way out. Not bad at all, Patrick Baumgartner in seventh place. So Francesco Friedrich leads from Adam Amor and Frankie Del Duca. Eleven sleds in, we get to Cedric Follador of Switzerland. Dominic Hufschmidt, the 25-year-old Bregman, only his second two-man World Cup, third two-man World Cup start. Raced in Segunda in February 2023, raced in Beijing in November 2023. So what are they doing, giving him six months to recover from each two-man race? Five point three is the start. Cedric Follador limited on experience here. Raced in the World Cup outings last season, eleventh and fifth in the four-man world. Careful, eight nine. Careful, twelve thirteen. Here we go. Ooh, little rocking, but he gets through. Oh, beautiful chicane by accident or design. So from the 11th, best start. Top 10 run underway. Maybe ninth place ahead of the Eclipse Kananda. Not quite. 10th place for Follador. 
Nico Mariani there, along with uh, Peter Ramsidel in the coach's box. So Cedric Follador. It's only Cedric's 15th two-man World Cup race. And his second here in Lake Placid. Finished 11th last year. And currently lying in 10th place. There are two or three or four danger men behind him coming up imminently. First of whom is Johannes Lochner, the winner here last year with Georg Fleischhauer. Today with 28-year-old Joshua Tasha behind him. Tasha's only previous two-man World Cup start was in Segulda last February with Max Ilman. Now let's see what these guys can produce. They need low teams. Wow, 509. Are you kidding me? Excellent stuff. Now Hansi Lochner lost the two-man World Cup lead after the crash in Altenburg when he did not race. But with four wins so far this season, a silver medal and a fourth place finish in Segulda, he's had a brilliant season. He's won two of the last three World Cup races here, including the last one. And this is an absolutely glorious looking run. Best speed of all. 100 behind Friedrich at the start. Closing back up. No, the gap stretches to 1400s back at the line. But he is in second place. Well, if you follow the pattern of gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver, it is actually Friedrich's turn to win gold and Hansi's to win silver, but I'm not sure that Hansi's going to see it that way. Joshua Tasha, what a great job on the back handles. Just saw briefly in the left-hand corner of the shot, Gail Fleischauer yelling them off. There's a little bit of illness going around, but uh, not sure if... Fleischauer will be racing in the four-man or not. We'll wait till Saturday to see. There's Hansi. Fan in the crowd. See that sign all day long, but haven't been close enough to actually read it. Got the wrong glasses on. Now then, here's an anomaly wrapped up in an enigma. Kim jin Su, former brakeman with Kim hyong dong behind him. The 28-year-old, half dozen NAC races here. Two gold, two silvers, including two wins in the last four outings. But in his World Cup debut as a driver, he took bronze in Altenburg of all places. Well, they start 5.13, so they're in the mix. And he knows this track well. This is where North America is where the Koreans learned to slide before the opening of Pyeongchang. I'm sure they still do a lot of trips down here. Rattling about a bit. Bit fastest at the start. Seventh on the split. And takes a big hit and a steal in the second element of the chicane. Still in fifth place. This is a good run from Kim Jin Su, seventh at the line. Two hundreds, uh, I beg your pardon, three hundreds behind Emil Tsipoulis and thirteen hundreds off Mickey Vogt in fifth. And he is ahead of Marcus Treichel by a couple. Well, they started competitively. And that was a great drive. I mean, the, the medal in Altenburg was utterly unexpected. The guys just wandered off. <laughs> they had no idea what to do. So Kim and Kim starting 5.13. Coming down in seventh place off the seventh best start. Well, there 
Kim Jin Soo and Kim Hyong Gong in the uh, weightlifters belt. As we get now to Chris Horn, the push world champion. Josh Williamson behind him, 27 year old great men, a former lacrosse player. Chris Horn in only his third World Cup as a driver. Race here in December 2019 on the brakes. Six North America's Cup races since then on this track. So he knows his place well. And again, like Frank Del Duca in the Pan Am Championship battle. But for him, it's all about trying to get in amongst the medals as well. 5.09, huge start. Trying to keep it straight to two. Not too much of a hit, but it gets a little skinny. Three to four. Out of five in the Devil's Highway. Eight and seven. And then the tricky eight, nine transition. He nails it. Three tenths back though. Second best start. Only eight from the splits, and there's no speed in the slow. Whoa! In real trouble out of 12. Rattles the chicane, seventh best speed. He's going to be at the bottom of the top ten, not the top of it. Fifty-five, sixty-one, and that looked, I'm afraid, like he was overdriving it. Well, Kim Jin Soo won both NAC races a couple of weeks ago in the two-man. Chris Horn was second in both. Uh, whereas Kim is seventh, Chris down in tenth place, and he is a solid two tenths back. And wow, 12:13 was not comfortable. The chicane they got an unfortunate bounce as well. That kicks the tail out, going the wrong way. All right, another run to go. Friedrich Longner Amor, Germany, one, two, three. Frank Del Duca leads Pan Am at the moment from Chris Horn. Now, Pat Norton and Mike Evelyn for Canada. They're in the Pan Am battle as well. They raced in the Europa Cup to sit in the NAC to six and seven. And that was the week of Pat Norton's 32nd birthday. He was racing the foreman in NAC on his birthday. His only two-man World Cup before today was here last season. He's had 16 two-man races on this track, so he knows it well. Mike Evelyn's only had four two-man start in Lake Placid, but this is his eighth two-man World Cup. Of the 13th best start, they're in 15th spot at the moment. Rattles through the chicane. Pretty skinny. This is 15th all the way. Pat Norton across the line, 56-4-1. That leaves him in 15th place. Also in third place in Pan Am. Well, finished in 13th last year on his World Cup debut on this track. Currently lying in 15th spot. Three still to come. I don't know whether any of the three remaining sleds will go quicker than Pat Norton. Uncomfortable chicane, hits left before he hits right and then left again. That might be the first sled we've seen do that. There's Pat. One more indeed. Now then, for Canada as well, Taylor Austin, 34 years of age, one World Cup and 20 North America's Cup two-man races on this track. So bags of experience. Finished ninth here last season. So he should be ahead of Pat Norton. Fifth two-man world. A World Cup for Jack Murray-Lawrence on the back handles. 
but only one two-man start from this track before now. That was in NAC at the end of last season. 5.33, the getaway. Give away 600s to their teammate. That means that Taylor Austin has to drive it down better. And come to be three to four after that slap tap on the wall. And into the Devil's Highway. Gets to eight nine. Third best speed, is that right? Off the 16th this start. Seems unlikely. Still in 13th place on the split. It's actually making it look like a really nice drive down. Where's he going to end up? Close to the top 10, 12th place, 55 67. So he's ahead of Calendar, Follador, Variola, Norton. Hops out and allows Shaq Murray Lons to get out the sled as well. well. That hit on three, kicked the tail out, kept the nose on the wall. And then climbing late height in 10 to dive down into the labyrinth, but just snags the wall going into 11. Gets nudged away, hard take on to 11. Two to go in the first heat of the two-man World Cup finale. And the first time here for Austria's Jakob Mandelbaum, the 25-year-old former decathlete, made his debut in the World Cup in Innsbruck, has not raced anything here. And Diane Mikkel Bardi behind him, who turned 23 last week. 100, 200 meter sprinter on the back handles. Only his third two-man World Cup. He started all of them with his driver, also in his third start. 5.25 getaway. Nice and quiet down for two. Skids from two to three. Gets a square tap off three, clean into four. Nine, hung up a little on the exit. Skidding down into 11, and look out! 12, 13, very uncomfortable. Speed dropping off the sled. And gets rattled by the chicane as well. well this is the drive of a man who's had six runs in training in two-man and four-man. 56-74, well, he got it down. And that is all you can hope for in your first race weekend at a track. This is not like racing cars where you get dozens and dozens and dozens of laps. Maximum training if you're doing two-man and four-man or mono and women's bob, six runs in a World Cup weekend. That's your lot. That's a lot to learn. Look at the way that the sled is just driving itself through here. He's hanging on and wrestling off the corners. And the more violently you're trying to steer it and save it, the more the speed comes out of the sled. That's why smooth is fast. Final sled, Great Britain's Adam Baird and Luca Williams alongside him. Adam's second two-man World Cup start, but for Brakeman Luca, it is a World Cup debut. Luca Williams with seven previous two-man races. Adam Baird's first time here. Let's see what he can produce. A 5.30 getaway. Now this will see them outside the top 10 but how much speed can he find looking smooth so far and another rented bed a lot of teams are renting here getting on for twenty thousand dollars to get the sled across the atlantic at the moment 
Adam at loan his friend Chris Hall when they were in Europe. And as a result, Renfin is playing here in a quid pro quo. And not a bad looking run at all. 16 at the start and 16 at the bottom. 56 2 5. Good job from Adam Baird. First time here in Lake Placid and gets it down in 16th place. So ahead of Pat Norton, who knows this track a lot better. And Jakob Mandelbar, fellow newcomer here. And congratulations to Luca Williams as well, the only newbie in the field, making his first World Cup two-man start. Adam made his debut in Segulda in the two-man sled. And in Lillehammer in the four-man, made his commentary debut as well this season. Well, a bit of a wild ride, lots to think about for the second heat. Hopefully not to overthink. But at the top of the pile, Francesco Friedrich. Three wins on this track. Is he going to make it a four? Or will Johannes Lochner come from behind and claim his third win here in Lake Placid? It's maybe not entirely down to them, but I don't think Adam Amor, Frank Del Duca are going to do more than battle over third place. They're just two hundreds apart. Mickey Vogt maybe too far back for a medal. And Mr. Poulis definitely. He's got to worry about Kim. And behind Kim, Trikel as well. And then Baumgartner, Chris Horn, Simon Friedley, Taylor Austin. And behind them, another little battle shaping up. Mattia Variola, Adam Baer, just two hundreds apart. So plenty going on. What won't be going on in the final run is a sled from Monaco. No second heat for Boris Vant and on from the Dubu. But the rest of them will be back on air from 3.30 Eastern, 19.30 GMT. 2030 CET, and that is in 38 minutes from now. See you then. Bye for now.